Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord is witness between you and me and between our descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left, and Jonathan went back to the town. So what led up to this sworn friendship, this level of relationship between David and Jonathan? And can we have that same level in our relationships today? Let's find out as we dive into today's daily devotional. So as we travel about our life, we look for those people that we can do that stuff with, right? We look for those dedicated friends, close confidants, whatever you want to call it. We look for those people that we can really pour our life out with and really will respect us and care for us in the same manner. And I, I love David. I love looking at the Old Testament and how he was this warrior for God and warrior for Christ. And it really excites me and so many different levels and different aspects through this journey. And this one right here is in particular is really one of those moments too because we really see this, this friendship, this type of relationship that developed between David and Jonathan. And it wasn't a relationship that was just, you know, out of just spending time together and hanging out and all the fun stuff. Really, as you look up into this moment, this was a relationship that was founded on going to battle together. I mean, they are, 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 are going into these battles in the name of the Lord, and they're coming out victorious. They've been there, they've had each other's back, and at that level, really creates this, this special type of bond. So we look at this and, and I want to read just a little bit of how kind of put this in context. In 1 Samuel 20, it says, Then David fled from Naoth and Ramah and went to Jonathan and asked, What have I done? What is my crime? How have I wronged your father that he is trying to kill me? So we see here, this is, this is after, you know, Saul is is kind of lost favor with God a little bit here. He's kind of getting a little bit paranoid and he's seeing David kind of rising up among the people and he's getting jealous. And so he's, he's going after David and his life. And so he's fled and he's, he's here with, with Jonathan. Never, Jonathan replied, you are not going to die. Look, my father doesn't do anything great or small without letting me know. Why would he hide this from me? It isn't so. But David took an oath and said, so that's big, right? He says he took an oath. There's something heavy here. Your father knows very well that I have found favor in your eyes. And he has said to himself, Jonathan must not know this or he will be grieved. Yet as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there is only one step between me and death. Jonathan said to David, Whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. So we see here that David's distressed. He's, he's, he's kind of on the run. He, he's, he doesn't know what to do. He's talking to Jonathan, a confidant, right? I mean, and, and Jonathan is Saul's son. So we know that there's a relationship here well enough that he can talk to Jonathan without Jonathan doing the will of his father and trying to kill him, right? I mean, going after him and things of that nature. There's something already here that they can be this candid with one another. And, you know, Jonathan's response is like, listen, my dad tells me everything. There's no way that I'm not going to know if he's coming after you or going to kill you or whatever. But David's like, but wait a minute. What if, what if your dad knows that you're going to be grieved by this? So he keeps this from you. And then so Jonathan just like, whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. Now, I think that's a pretty big statement. And it's one thing that I, I would say that we need to examine about our close friends, the people that we do life with, the people that we go to these, fight these battles with. Are they the kind of person that would ask this, whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. 
I, I don't know about you, but it's, it, you know, and I have friends who, who I know would say this to me and do this. So I think that's a big, big thing to look at right there is, is, is the people that you do battle with every day and, and fighting this, 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 this great fight and doing, going through life with, are they willing to say that? Are they, do they have that mentality? Do, they, do you know that they will stand by your side and do whatever it takes for you? And then he goes on, As for you, show kindness to your servant, uh, for you have brought him into the covenant uh, with you before the Lord. If I am guilty, then kill me yourself. Why hand me over to your father? Never, Jonathan said. If I had the least inkling that my father was determined to harm you, wouldn't I tell you? So we're kind of jumping down here to verse 8 there, and he's still trying to go back and forth about David, you know, your father's trying to kill me. You know, Jonathan's like, well, no. If, if my father was going to kill you, wouldn't I tell you? Right? This is still speaking volumes to their friendship, to the relationship that Jonathan would tell David if this was true. He's not trying to hide. He's not trying to deceive. Then jumps down a little bit further. Then Jonathan said to David, I swear by the Lord, the God of Israel, that I will surely sound out my father by this time, the day after tomorrow. If he is favorably disposed toward you, will I not send you word and let you know? So here Jonathan's putting some action behind his words, right? Which is another key thing about the, that battle buddy, those, those close friendships we have in our life. Where they put the actions behind their words? Where they, where they put that action there? And he's saying, listen, I'm going to feel my father out. I'm going to find out. I'm going to feel him out. I'm going to see what he's going to do. And will I not send word for you? Will you not know? Will I not let you know? Right? I mean, he's kind of putting that question back to him. I, I, I'm, I'm going to let you know, David. And so you know, jo- Jonathan had asked not to have um, you know, you know, David kind of cut off his kindness to him, his family, right? Jonathan's asking this, kind of making this, this promise, this covenant. Hey, listen, please, whatever you do, please show, continue to show favor to me. Whatever the outcome is, right? Show kindness to me and my family. Don't, don't cut them out uh, if my father comes after you, right? You know, I, I, I would feel the same as Jonathan at this point, that if, if something associated and would hurt one of my friends, I would hope that you know, and I, I have nothing there. You know, I mean, you kind of know what my stance is. I hope it doesn't harm us. I hope it doesn't harm our friendship, right? So here, here's something really crucial. Then it goes on in verse 16. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him, because he loved him as he loved himself. See, this is that that level of love, that level of friendship, that level of commitment to one another that only gets forged through through fighting together, right? Going through the ups and downs of life together. And that's, you know, I hope you have that in your life. I hope you have those people in your life. And if you don't, you know, maybe you have people in your life, examine that because it is so crucial to have a relationship like this with at least one person that you know that is there and, and that, will, that has your back, that will be there for you. So what has happened next here is that they kind of divided the way that Jonathan could let David know what he found out. To let him know and, and figure out a warning to David if, if things doesn't go well. So, you know, sending arrows out and there's a, a servant boy there and all stuff like that. This whole method plays out. Saul didn't like it. You know, Saul's intentions were not good. <laughs> Jonathan found out, so he sent that warning to David. So we catch up here at the end here in 41. It says, after the boy had gone, this is a, a servant that, you know, that Jonathan had given all his weapons to and, you know, and, and sent him on his way. After he had gone, David got up from his hiding place from the south side of stone and bowed down before Jonathan three times with his face to the ground. Then they kissed each other and they wept together, but David wept the most. Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for we have sworn friendship in each other in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left and Jonathan went back to the town. So I just, I love this moment. There's, there's other moments too uh, that you, you can look at about the relationship. But here we see we see this heartbreaking moment where they have to split apart. Jonathan's stuck. 
you know, he's, he's committed to his father, he's committed to the king. David, in a sense, is still committed to the king. We see kind of his actions allude to that later on when he doesn't, he chooses not to take the king's life and, and uh, you know, take upon the mantle that the Lord anointed him to be. But we see that Jonathan stuck here, but Jonathan is for David. Jonathan is, is going to be brutally honest with him. David's going to be brutally honest with Jonathan. There's no sugarcoating. There's no hiding things one another, despite the consequences that might be coming from lying or not lying or hiding something or being public. So this, this friendship, this, this bond happened through their time together in these wars, fighting together, celebrating together, pouring these, these moments out together. And you see that this is kind of a bittersweet end of the friendship. And there's a little sprinkling throughout uh, the rest here where they're separated, they're stuck being separated. And later on, you see when, when David gets word of Jonathan's death, oh, it was devastating, right? So all in all, the biggest thing that I want to challenge all you with is number one, examine your relationships and your friendships with people around you. Are they the kind that you can go into this battle that we fight the enemy every day and they're standing by your side, they got your back? Do, are they the type of friend that Jonathan is to David and David is to Jonathan? And if you don't, what are you doing to seek after that? What are you doing to seek that type of level of friendship? Sometimes it requires us to be a little bit more vulnerable. Sometimes it requires us to open up a little bit and allow those people to come in and be that support for us. The next thing that I think is really crucial is that if you have that battle buddy, if you have that close friend, or maybe it's more than one, call them up, text them, reach out to them, let them know how important they are to you. And I, 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 I challenge you to, to state that, that question that Jonathan did to David. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. Obviously within reason, of course, but it's that mentality and that heart behind that friendship being willing to be what they need you to be in the, in the dire times, in the happy times, to be that solid, godly friend they need in their life. So I hope this challenges you. I hope this motivates you. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into this devotional. Let me say a quick word of prayer and you can have a wonderful evening. God, thank you so much uh, for your word, Lord. I thank you for David. I thank you for Jonathan's relationship and how we can view that and and there's so many other things and elements about these stories that we can pull out. But as we look at what it means to have that close friendship with someone that, that, that is with us through the ups and downs and, and is there for us and supports us and encourages us, Lord. And then we can do that for those people, Lord, because we don't want to be one-sided. We want to make sure that we can be just as good as friend as those are friends to us. And so, Lord, I thank you for those people that we have in our lives. I thank you for those people that are committed uh, to, to caring for and listening for and, and, and pushing and motivating each other when is needed, Lord. So thank you once again for who you are and what you do. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful evening. Take care, and we'll see you Sunday.